off. Just wanted to uh, give you an update. Um, and the uh, project manager for uh, this development is here as well. So, uh, giving an update, a uh, group's wanting to take over. Uh, I think you have the contract secured, correct, uh, for the uh, old Logan County uh, Hospital on the west side of town. Um, use it for uh, senior living. Um, in any of the blanks that I might uh, forget to fill in, I'm sure that he can uh, later. But a total of 52 units, uh, over a $10 million investment is planned for uh, this development. Uh, what they need is a resolution of support in order to get some uh, tax subsidies from the state. Um, if, you're, uh, if you recall, some of these projects in the past have asked the city to um, waive fees or uh, something of that nature. Uh, they no longer, uh, OFA does no longer, Oklahoma Housing Finance Authority? Agency. Agency, sorry. Uh, OFA does not uh, require that any longer. So we are, we're not asked to be, uh, we're, we're not asked to uh, uh, be out any money uh, from fee waiver, wavering or uh, anything like that. Uh, the historical consultant has already been hired. Um, like I said, a, a total of 52 units for this project. There is a second project who uh, is not represented here tonight, but um, and we haven't received uh, their their plans or anything like that. Kind of around the same area, um, further further south, but still kind of in the west part of town. Um, just to kind of give you, I was looking for it earlier, and I uh, can't find uh, where I found the strategic plan that was published in 2002. But um, uh, part of that was the. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the idea to support uh, residential construction for uh, various types of uses, uh, including uh, low income, senior living, and traditional R1 um, single family residential uh, units. Uh, since 2009, we have actually uh, had 315 new senior living residences built inside city limits. And so, uh, just to kind of give you a measuring rod of, where, of what success we've seen since that strategic plan done in 2002, I uh, wanted to include that. Um, that's about all I have right now. Question? So is this going to be, is this that third page? Is this no. what it's going to be? Where is it going to be exactly? The Old Logan County Hospital, uh, which is located around um, 19th and... North 19th Street and West Warner, Warner. basically. Mm -hmm. is the, okay. It's the abandoned yes, hospital. Okay. It, I'm just refreshing my memory, but at one time we had a, a proposition brought to us in the past that showed uh, some conceptual, you know, some schematic designs of re, redoing the... Probably me. Mm -hmm. okay. They've been working on it for I've been doing... I was going to say, I, I'm just curious, if I want to make sure it's sure. the same group, because in, in, in tune with the hospital, there was also a series of developments of smaller, Around uh, I would say duplex style uh, this development as it's currently designed, and uh, I am Greg Rodewald with Belmont Development. I've been working with the City of Guthrie on this building since 2006. Yeah. Uh, started out, I think Melody Kellogg was the city manager. Uh, Renee Spinato is now since retired, I understand, and I miss her. Uh, you know, she was great. But uh, we, I've been working on this building for a long time. I'm like a dog with a bone. And uh, it's a beautiful structure, and it needs to be saved. It needs to be renovated. And uh, the current design has, uh, let me get it right, 36 units in the existing building of one and two bedroom units, 31 one bedroom units, five two bedroom units. And then as since that site sets on almost a full city block, right. Uh, we have an interior court, courtyard designed along with 16 new construction units okay. uh, on the periphery, if yeah, you Yeah, that's will. what I remember. Right. And I have a copy of the site plan as it exists now, if you guys would like to see that. So. I remember. Well, I know, I, I know it, and I know that Z does it, but maybe the rest mm -hmm. of the group might want to just take a peek at it real quick. And sure. Because it was, a, I remember it being a, a good design. It was a nice design. It was complimentary to the area. In the packet that's coming around, there's a little bullet point narrative that gives you some of the basic highlights, and then behind that is the site plan and the floor plan of the the floor plans of the existing structure from the basement level up through the fifth floor, as well as the two bedroom new construction unit floor plan as well, at least as they exist at this point. Well, I know a little bit.
little bit about rehabbing big buildings here in Jefferson. <laughs> yeah. They're expensive. Yeah. <laughs> How does this fall with the 72 city limits? That's Inside? Um, I was trying to find the map. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're looking for that? They're outside. They're outside? They're outside? Wow. It just means that, um, I don't know if I can speak freely to that, um, basically what that means is that uh, they will go, we will request uh, that they, as of today, let me be very clear, which this can change tomorrow, literally, um, as of today we would ask them to go request water um, from the district, from Logan One Rule, uh, and then if they are, uh, of course, provided water, they, they have water and they can continue. Uh, if they are denied service, then uh, we will come back to you and have a conversation. Right. Or request the annexation also in that process. Okay. And we need to, I, and I'm going to, double, we have a line issue right there at 19th Street on our boundary map, and we are we will confirm. I don't know if you've had that conversation yet. And then, was that redone in that sewer line work up too? That's going to be another big issue coming down Maxine, through there. I, I'm not aware of sewer issues for that facility. We did cross 19th Street. I'm not exactly sure if it was on the I think it was on the south side of Noble. But I mean, once it, if, if, this, if they do this and all of a sudden you've got people living there and using yeah, it, totally. now the sewer line from there to the east, Goes into our sewer has it been redone? Because now we're going to be putting a lot of use through that sewer line that wasn't there before. We'll probably have to have that checked, but I think it's probably okay. Right, so something we need to look at too then. Okay. So really what they're requesting now is bring to the workshop to um, look at doing a resolution in the next council meeting that uh, they just need a letter that you're supporting the project. It's not a financial tie. It's not a much more of an obligation than... Yes, exactly. Right now, the only thing that we're asking of the City of Guthrie is a resolution of support from the full City Council that just states your support of the project, and uh, we'll need a letter that states that the property is currently zoned for the type of use that we plan to, you know, do there. Uh, unless the zoning has changed, uh, you know, it's so like I said, I've been in front of the City Council here in Guthrie a lot of times. I've had that letter in the past, so unless the zoning has changed. I think we had the zoning conversation within the last month, haven't we? I think R1, so. Um, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I remember us talking about I it. I don't recall R1. It's commercial R1. something, but oh, based on the one? pyramid type zoning, any any use oh, under that was acceptable, oh. and that sort of covered us. So, oh, okay. Sorry, I just remember me confirming with him that it was what he needed to fix. It's 21st Street. It's 21st. So that's inside. <laughs> Yeah, I believe it's, it's inside the city limits with city, city water and sewer. At least it has been in the past. I don't. Is this it's a 1972 city limits? Sewer. It's a long story. Oh. You're good. Okay. You're good. <laughs> You're good. It's an important issue. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Cheryl. Is this assisted living or or a really apartment living? It's really apartment living. We bump right up against assisted living, if you will, but when you cross that line, you have to have all sorts of medical licensures, etc. Right. Uh, we have office space and community rooms where we can bring in visiting nurses and do all of those things that bump but, right but up no against that. no cafeteria, per se. Oh, yes. Oh, you do have oh, a cafeteria? Yes. Uh, there'll be a rooftop garden uh, on, on the top. Uh, since since your new Mercy Hospital has our cross out there now. Uh, yeah, there you go. And, you know, I've been doing this since 2006, so I've kept up with it. I know that the cross was stolen and ended up in a junkyard somewhere. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm sure that the State Housing Preservation Office and or the National Park Service will have us redesign, remanufacture the cross. It will be back on the roof of that building and lit. That's interesting. Uh, but if you look at the floor plans, you'll see lots of office space, lots of sitting areas, the center court, yeah. courtyard. Uh, the fifth floor housed the nuns, the Benedictine nuns, when they were there. All that stuff will be preserved as best as we can. Uh, we'll do a big rooftop garden up there. Uh, I think the final design is something that not only we, but the you know the city of Guthrie will be extremely extremely proud proud of. And, uh, I guess one other question that I have is, 
the, the rent or on this, will this be uh, subsidized by the state? It's or is subsidized it in terms of part of our financing structure will include affordable housing tax credits, okay. both federal and state, okay. and historic tax credits, both federal and state. The uh, historic really doesn't have any income tied to it. The affordable housing credits, the income limits for uh, Oklahoma City, Logan County falls into the Oklahoma City MSA. So the rents and incomes are a little higher, but it is rent and income restricted. So we're targeting a lot of it. You know, the seniors that are making six figure, you know, retirement, that's not the people that we're after there. So maybe uh, kind of a moderate, but not yes, low income. I think moderate, moderate is probably okay. a good choice of work. Okay, thank yes. you. Well, I appreciate your dedication. I mean, I, I've been working on it a long time. It has been. Well, it finally reached the point about 2009 that I had so much money invested in it, I couldn't quit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, from my perspective, I'm excited to see it happen. Mm -hmm. I know it's well, um, if I could just add one more thing. The, and for lack of a better word, the political climate mm -hmm. has changed dramatically for these types of structures. Uh, and I apologize, I'm not originally from Oklahoma. I've only been here for nine years. Uh, the realtor that helped me find this is now my wife, so I threaten to sue her all the time. But uh, uh, the political climate has changed as such that uh, I believe it's Representative Debbie Blackburn now sits on the Oklahoma Housing Agency as a trustee, and she's big into this type of renovation and uh, the state housing agency OFA has placed a preference on these starting this year uh, so I think you'll start seeing a lot of this type of this type of redevelopment this conversion getting done so uh, I feel extremely excited it's going to get done this time Excellent. I truly believe it will anything else Kobe? Mm -hmm. either bring a resolution next time yeah. and so now, if it's within the limits, we don't need the water deal. Nope. Uh, so we're good to go there. Now, do I need to come to the council meeting on the 16th or the workshop on the 16th? Or what's my next step, just so I know? We will so. call you and let you know. But you are welcome always to come to a council meeting. Um, you all have always been real gracious sure. through <laughs> the years. Welcome to come. You are not required. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, number four, discussion regarding the current lease agreement for our 80 acres out east of town. Kim, the, we're, we're discussing it. Um, on your agenda for downstairs at 7, there's a lease agreement with Duet Construction for eight acres of that 80 acres. We currently have at least right now the entire 80 acres with um, Mr. Graves, and but he has graciously been willing to work with the, the, the company that's wanted to use the eight acres. And so, but what he's asked is um, if he would consider extending the lease agreement, his current lease agreement, which expires June 30th, if we would, um, we, you would consider extending it for a couple of months, or maybe when we go to rebid it, rebid it for two years instead of a one year term. And currently, um, we do usually we start the bidding process in May. And so this kind of works out with do a construction being there for <coughs> six, seven, seven months, months yes. yeah, eight months, mm -hmm. like that. So it, it would help us out as well if, if, if that's something that you were consider doing. You know, if he's got that, there, there's options in there for other potential possible building sites maybe because of other construction with loves and whatnot. Maybe other people moving in. If he's got a two-year lease, will that tie that His in? termination clause. Yeah. His lease okay. has an instant Seven. termination. Yeah. Okay. And he's, and he's always agreed to that. He okay. understands that that is a property that's always and Basically, he just runs cattle and cuts it for hay or whatever. He does. Then. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so, yeah. I so, mean, so what's he wanting? Wanting just a t two months? Actually, instead? I believe he wants both. Um, tack on two months to the contract. We bring the contract back to you at a later at the next meeting, uh -huh. and then when we do bid it, he he would like to entertain a two year rather than having to do this every year. Which we're happy to not bid the same property every year when it has a termination clause of immediate. Yeah. You always have it. And if, you know, if we extend it for two months, then we would start the bidding process say July, August, okay. with a September 1 or October 1 start date. And it's all going to depend on when do it construction moves out. Um, and they're going to be on the far east end, if I understood the other drawing better. So they go up 33 and they'll cut yeah. across right there at college. Yeah. 
And that's where they'll be doing their traffic at. And of. they're paying to erect the fence. They are. They they're to protect the cattle and uh, separate them. They yeah. they've agreed and do it construction. And mm -hmm. Mr. Graves are in conversations today. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks like a very amenable yeah. relationship between those two. Sure. Barbed wire fences make great neighbors. <laughs> Who's farming the place now? Alvin Graves. Okay, Graves. that's what I thought. I, I thought I just asked. So for us to take part of the property that we leased and we feel that it's fair to yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, extend the contract. Yeah, Any other questions? So you going to put that on the agenda or is that our operations? Yeah, we'll do that the in a couple of months. We'll take it to okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do it any time. Well, that's true. Yeah. Before it fires. <laughs> All, right. All right, number five, discussion regarding lease agreement for Queen of the Prairie Festival. Cody. So, so the uh, next uh, talking point, uh, Aaron's supposed to have some uh, artwork up there here in just a moment. Did this is there. Did you go there? I did not. I did not. Uh, so what we have, uh, obviously we uh, got really put on the map with the Mumford & Sons concert. Um, and some locals have done a really great job of bringing some music and entertainment uh, to, to town as well with the Make Guthrie Road block party. So um, the, the uh, family with Prairie Gothic and the people behind the block parties is here if you have any questions about their event. Um, to be brief, May 1st and 2nd is when they're looking to uh, secure the lease for at the Cottonwood Flats, uh, similar in style to the Oklahoma International Bluegrass Festival. Skipping down a little bit, a uh, conversation with Public Works last week. Uh, we talked uh, with labor equipment and materials. Uh, the city typically um, in kind supports the Bluegrass Festival with $21,626 annually uh, and, and some change. Uh, the, the main portion of that work is uh, strictly straight from Blue himself. Uh, the, the main portion of that work is the the fence construction, the uh, digging the potholes, those kind of things, or the uh, fence hole, the uh, post hole, sorry, um, and uh, and getting that fence up ready for the ready for the event. And so, um, complementary to the city council vision for 2015, talking about uh, enhancing the tourism uh, uh, tourism drive in the community. Um, Public Works says uh, water horses for or T posts can be supplied with no significant cost. Is that water uh, hoses or horses? Horses. Horses. <laughs> they're horses. horses. They're horses. horses. They actually are horses. Water, water hoses are really easy to hide. So. Uh, and they make noises. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but those water posts can uh, be put up with no significant cost or time. So. So I got a question. So to be clear on the Queen of the Prairie, is that like just saying this is the name of a concert and we're gonna have all these bands? Is that what that is? How about this? How about I would love to introduce uh, Christy Clifford um, to come and um, uh, speak a little bit about uh, what it is. Okay. Um, well, it's basically. You gotta go you know, up there. I guess speak from there. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get that on this? I'll see if she'll release. We have released today our headliners. I'm not our headliners. Part of our lineup. We have released half of it, as a matter of fact. But um, it will be not like Mumford, I don't think, and not like Byron's. I'm, I, it'll be something we think fits Guthrie. Is why we went with Queen of the Prairie. We have no idea how many people will come. I think um, it will not be in the range of Mumford either, and hopefully it will be at least what Byron has. But this, um, we don't require, I don't think, anything extra than what Byron required for that type of crowd, that type of event. It's like family friendly type music and all of that. I don't think it's a rowdy crowd, it's not heavy metal, it's not anything else. We've checked into insurance for our events. And I've read their different um, categories of what they'll insure and what they won't. And um, the companies cover a lot of things. I mean, they co and the companies that do it, I've asked local people to see if they could insure Jennifer Bozar specifically, if she could get us together a policy that would cover the same things that they would. So we would be covered for a lot of different things in the policies I've looked at. They would be covered for. 
um, you know, like the tents you use or the anything that's damaged in the area, even weather-wise and other stuff that come up. There's it covers a whole lot. That it does, but um, there will be mostly Americana music. We think that fits Guthrie. We think that that's just the backdrop is perfect, and we really, really, really hated to lose momentum from Mumford and Sons because that was brought a lot of people to town and a lot of things going on and we wanted to keep keep it going that this is a festival town and that the type of festivals we have can be non-intrusive and non um, it won't be like big roadblocks or anything but we've already actually found some economic development from it the lady one of our friends from Nashville who's a photographer and works for Americana magazine has already booked her space She's so excited about it, and um, we're getting ready to block off rooms for our artists and stuff that we need. So it's going to be a lot of, like, Americana covers a lot of genres, but we have a hometown boy that's going to be playing, we're excited about. Guthrie couldn't have a festival without Parker, we didn't think at all, <laughs> since you have the best in the country right here, actually. We went all over Nashville while we were there checking out different entertainers and looked at everybody and then came right back and said, well, I think Parker. <laughs> and Parker seems to be the best they have. So we were excited. So in case you guys are wondering who's one of the best Americana moving up quick, it's our guy here. Or hers. Our guy. <laughs> I call him my guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, that's, it's not going to be, um, I don't foresee any big disasters or any big catastrophes or a big wild event or anything like that. We, we were asking for camping and not even as many spaces to start with at all as what even Mumford had, and just to kind of keep it controllable. Will the majority of your um, venues be in the flats, or are we going to have some downtown stages as well? What we've planned so far right now is just in the flats, okay. just one stage in the flats. That was what we found when we went to Americana Fest was we missed so many acts because they had different <laughs> venues, so we wanted the people to be able to see everybody. So we would schedule them one after another. So we're thinking about in the flats. Okay. And we've already got our farmers on neck out and prayed for weather. So, <laughs> so that's about what we're going with. Do you this. have any other band names? Yet? Well, we're having Parker. We're having J.D. McPherson. A group called Whiskey Shores. <laughs> that sounds a little wild, but they're really funny. If you look at their stuff, we've posted it all on Twitter, on the Queen of the Prairie Twitter, at the link to their music. So you can see to the artist, Samantha Crane, she's... Uh, Oklahoma artist and she's been nominated for Aboriginal awards all over the world and she's touring with a group from Sweden now and Rolling Stone just did an article about her. So Oklahoma artists are really, uh, today I think it was today that JD had an article in Huffington Post that they put an article about his music so Oklahoma artists are doing things and they're moving and shaking and so we're excited about it and think that um, a lot of people in like the study that that they did the OU study with would fit our venue. They will come within that radius to see people. I think they will. This crowd, like I said, I don't believe I mean, nobody's won a Grammy album yet. <laughs> but when I, I don't think so, I don't think it'd be like Mumford. <coughs> and we don't have that type of advertising machine behind us. It will be a lot of. Um, of your social media and stuff like that. And we will specifically target other areas trying to bring people from Dallas or Wichita. And stuff. So that's about what it is. Any more questions? And you Anybody can else? Questions for not, not that I want to enforce any political influence on you, but you know, a ticket might be nice. <laughs> 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 I totally tease me off. Pay my share. I'm just joking. But uh -huh. I'm excited. I mean, from my perspective, yeah. I think it's great. I know that. You know, it I don't, from from a city council from a from a city council view, what you guys are doing is wonderful. And I, I truly appreciate it. So. Thank you. She told me she'd come over and sell you some. Yeah, I know. Yeah. She'll come over and sell you some right now. I'm going home. <laughs> We actually did open ticket sales today, and Perfect. so Perfect. so we're excited about we're moving forward. So well, since we open ticket sales, we're hoping that this goes through okay, <laughs> or else we'll be able, like out in some farmers field like Woodstock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Or not. that. Anyway, this is exciting. So we are excited. We are very excited because we have chosen like we think the cream of the crop of Americana people. What they what they really like. 
the girls that were with me in Nashville spent their time looking at the bands, and I spent my time watching the audience, well, who liked what, so I kind of picked that way, and they picked who they liked. <coughs> 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 Super sorry. So what we intend to do is you can take home this um, draft agreement, which uh, really mimics very similar to the uh, Oklahoma International Bluegrass Festival. If you see anything um, you like, you don't like, let me know, and um, we'll place it on a uh, future council agenda, probably on December 16th. Um, hearing no comments from you in the next two weeks, it would look just like this. So y'all take that home, take a look, um, and let me know if you have any comments. Visit our website and look at it, see what we have up there, see who's coming. Share them on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> yeah, get you on Twitter and check that out. Is that it then? Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you guys. Appreciate it. Very much. Okay, we're going to jump back to number four real quick. Um, Alvin? Yes, sir. All right. We discussed the 80 acres and the 9 acres that they want to use on the east end of that. Yeah, my understanding was 8, but 9 is fine. Do you have any problems or whatever it is? No, I talked with, uh, oh, Gary, Gary uh, with uh, DeWitt Construction. He was in Dallas. Connection wasn't really great, but I think he's a great guy that I can work with. We'll, we'll be just so fine. So you're good to go on that? Okay. Sure, absolutely. All right. All right. now you signed up, it's late, but did you need to tell us anything in particular? No, no not okay. really. I just wanted the option if I needed to say something or whatever, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. It's nice yeah. to be your first time for me. Because so. we talked about the two months extra and then the two-year bid next time. Yes, so, yeah, yes. We, we discussed all that. that. Boy, that'd be a godsend. It helped me so much. I know you, know, you have guidelines and rules to follow, but yeah. it would be very helpful. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, number six, discussion regarding agenda items. One thing real quick on item E. That's the uh, cameras. Where are we at? Body cameras, right? Now, I know we're getting a grant or whatever, mm -hmm. but now with uh, supposedly on TV the president saying he's going to come up in millions of dollars to do this, do we get part of that? Or is that something that's later on and we'll already have ours bought? Um, do you do it in Ferguson? Yeah. I, I, I think I can just say that we have a grant available now, and we would like to accept that grant rather than wait on what the federal government would like to do. Okay. Right. Anything else on agenda items? Yes, um, I, on the yearly calendar, I mentioned this a little bit earlier before the meeting, on the Transportation Authority, I did change that up, and I put that in everyone's Dropbox instead of one a month or a meeting each month. It's quarterly, which is per trust the trust agreement, and so um, it is in your Dropbox if you have any questions. And so that's what we'll post up for the yearly meetings. And I, I intend to recommend to the council to Joe Coffin on the Planning Commission and. Clarice Rando for transportation. Just so you know if there's any problems with that. Uh, number seven, request for future items of discussion. Anything we missed? Anything we got coming out? Besides John's artwork? <laughs> Beautiful man. That's it. Number eight. <laughs> we are adjourned.